so hi uh hello welcome um i apologize for the weird angle um i don't have like proper green screen setup so i just have the tv uh, in my back which will provide you hopefully a nice enough background uh, without me having to broadcast my living room into the internet um hopefully in future iterations of this uh if this goes well uh, we'll have a better setup but for now you're just gonna have to look at me from from this weird angle um Okay, so we do have uh, the slash perm slash sh, um, and that is what go crazy starts. Um, so go help no, edit. Um, what we're gonna do is uh, github.com. Ooh, can we cancel this? Github.com go crazy, go crazy. Oh, nice. Um, okay. Go source GitHub. Go crazy. Go crazy. Um, cool. Okay, so I have this little um, Emacs window layout here, um, which this is what I use by default, um, but on a better screen resolution. I am on full HD for Twitch streaming only. Um, I'm gonna give this a try, see how well it works. Maybe it doesn't work so well, in which case I will just uh, switch away from it like so, or like so, um, or undo these changes. Um, this is very nice, a very nice part of Emacs that I like a lot, which is the uh, window management that's built in. It feels so much better than Vim's window management with which I could never uh, get to grips with. Okay, um, so let us see. I think there should be permis age somewhere in here. Uh, yep. Um, so if we read something from standard in anything at all, um, we are trying to read one byte, and what we get, uh, what we do here is, if permis h is present, we're gonna give an interactive shell, um, and if not, we're at least gonna update the listeners, um, which was sort of a debugging thing that I added a while ago, um, where we were. Um, obviously debugging why an HTTP listener wouldn't come up. Okay, so um, first of all, what we are gonna do is uh, gonna add this log message here so we verify that um, the changes we're making are actually being applied. Um, speaking of, we're not actually done yet. Um, what I wanted to do here is, if I just run the packer again in this directory, um, what will happen is it will still use the go crazy, go crazy from GitHub. Um, so for my changes to be picked up, um, I actually need to run this, um, sorry, I need to run this uh, go mod edit command. Um, and what I want to do is dash replace. So go mod edit, Dash replace old equals new. Um, okay, so old is this, new is this. Cat go up mod. Okay, this is what I had expected. So now Go should be using that version. Um, and if I do go crazy update packer, update equals yes. Um, it's going to take a little bit. Uh, now this on the Raspberry Pi 4 is already a little bit faster than on the older Raspberry Pi versions, but uh, it still takes its sweet time. Uh, my suspicion is that this is not because of the Ethernet, which uh, actually benchmarks much, much fat faster. I think this is because of the um, SD card or the internal I.O. or something being slow, um, and that's why it can't actually write the the, the new image to its storage quickly enough. Okay, um, so now to verify that the uh, code that we changed is actually pulled in, we're doing enter and we can see that the message that we have added here is actually showing up on the serial console. So that is great. Um, serial console, busy box, we can do away with this. Do away with this. Okay, um, the next step is um, 
we're gonna set this up so that we're gonna do an update as the compile command in Emacs. Um, and then we can just have the serial console here. Um, do our modifications here and just recompile very easily and just have it update automatically like the device. Um, there is a way which is a little bit more convenient, but it doesn't work for like um, init system changes where you know you handle how you change how the uh, init process handles the serial console input. Um, so we're gonna have to have these little breaks here where we wait for a couple of seconds until the Raspberry Pi 4 has rebooted. Um, luckily, it comes up quite quickly, and this gives me also a chance to uh, look at the chat, answer questions, or just you know, take a little break um, in between modifications. Okay, um, so let's see here. Um, we didn't change anything, so this is still what we expect. Now, um, the next thing that we want to do is um, we want to get like a clean build of BusyBox that we can then include um, as like a third-party binary blob in here. Um, and we want to embed this. Um, how are we going to do this? Probably going to... Um, so the easiest is if we were to put it into a separate package, right? Um, under the go crazy GitHub organization. So where we currently have all of these repositories, um, the firmware, continuous integration stuff, um, tools, the, the the packer is in there, um, the end system itself, etc. Um, we could just add like a um, busy box here, um, which you know, uh, yeah, we could just add this as like. Uh, Sorry. Um, you can just add this uh, find find busy box shell. In user busy box and started with go crazy serial equals one or something along these lines. Um, so these are the changes that we have made so far. Um, find busybox shell and user busybox. Um, yeah, so the tricky part here is that we want busybox to actually not start up, not be started by um, the go crazy um, in it by default. Um, and the way that we accomplish this is we can change what the uh, BusyBox binary does. Uh, for example, uh, one, one trick that we could do is we could wrap it um, in a Go program. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to open this up, add a new directory here. Um, it's going to be called BusyBox. Let me think if that has really a descriptive enough name. Busybox serial. Why not busybox serial? Or serial busybox. Uh, yeah, I think hierarchy wise, this is better. Okay, so now we're going to say go mod init github.com go crazy serial busybox. All right, we have a go.mod file in here. Um, now. This should be, um, should have like go run, go bet dot go. Oof, uh, yeah, and then we're gonna have to see where we can uh, snag this from. So, go bed. Uh, oh yeah, there is a version of it. That's nice. Um, go bed. Where do we generate it? Here. That's great. Bundle go. Um, that is exactly what I wanted. So go run go embed dash package bundled. In this case, we're going to say package main. Um, the var is going to be assets, and the assets are going to be third party slash busybox dash to do slash busybox, I suppose. Um, 
and this can go and then gonna navigate go crazy going but gonna be copying it to zero busy box okay great um now if we say go generate it's gonna say open third party busy box to do no such follow directory as expected uh, because we haven't actually built busybox yet so uh let's see gonna download the latest version here busybox move this out of the way uh, whoops okay Um, so if I'm not mistaken, I think it uses menu config like the Linux kernel, and there is an option called static. Unfortunately, it doesn't use the same like number based keyboard shortcut system as the Linux kernel. So we're gonna have to navigate here. Um, this says location settings, settings, um, static, not on this screen. There we go. Build static binary, no shared lips. This is what we want, and then um, I think there's like a um, a prefix variable that we can use. I thought. Okay. Let's see. Cross compiling busybox for ARM. Oh yeah, so sure. I guess this is what we want. Um to say undefined reference to s time but did it actually produce the binary looks like the answer is no what happens if i do this why does it run everything again oh man okay so ld complains and there are like, I need to look at this here. So this is like a warning, but this is like an actual error. Oh, I think I know what this is. Um, I think this is like an Arch Linux specific issue where, was there like a patch for it? not um let me see i thought maybe this is like um maybe i have already dealt with this industry yeah there's an s time patch i think this might be it this actually um oh boy uh s time patch Okay. This is weird. Um, patch that. Dash p1 s standard patch. Make it again. Okay. Uh, Let's see, this is a statically linked stripped ARC64. This looks good. Um, 
I'm going to copy this. Uh, what did we say? So we said we wanted this in uh, a directory called third party and busybox dash 1.31 1. Um, put that in there. Sorry, skip that. Go crazy. Third party. Okay, good. Okay, it's in here. And then 1311. Regenerate. Oh boy. Uh, kill this compilation. Bundled that go. Bundled. Do like this. Bundled. Ooh, large file. Oh, <laughs> my computer does not like this. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, no. This is not good. Uh, oh, okay. I thought. Good. Uh, you got to live. <laughs> there it. So we have the gun bundled. Okay, so what we need now um, is we have generate.go, which is otherwise empty. And now what we need is an actual func main. And what you should do is. Um, Go crazy, go crazy. Close this. Uh, don't start on boot. Yeah, that is it. Okay, uh, so what we're going to do here uh, go crazy hello. Going to do a replace command. Can say serial busy box it is to be found here. Can add it to the compile command. Bitup.com go crazy serial busy box. Okay. It says it found it. So um, we're gonna see if it's gonna be included in the next update. Uh, this is now writing to the Raspberry Pi as before. Uh, it can open the serial console here so we can watch it come back. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, more than it has to, strictly speaking, because currently it's just always attempting an EEPROM update, uh, which, yeah, I should really change that um, and only do it whenever there actually is something to update. But that's not done yet. So um, let's see here. It has come back indeed. And now we have a serial busy box here, which actually just does nothing. Okay. Um, now what we can do is um, we can change it so that um, don't start a boot. This just exits, right? Um, so what we can do is ex write the executable executable two slash temp, which is a tempfs. Um, so this says a variable is bundled. Go, to, go crazy, go crazy. So uh, less gen bundled. So this is really just a uh, map into which we can index. So we're going to say bundled, then this key here. Okay. Um, I'm going to say, oops, uh, error is a utility write file slash temp slash serial busybox busybox 0755rd file permissions. 
and Conan Riot Busy Box. Okay, and Fatal F, otherwise this is okay. And then what we're gonna say, um, we're gonna log in real quick here. Um, start break class for us. Okay. Um, and now what we're going to do is perm sh perm o dot sh, so that here now it does nothing. Uh, it does actually update the listeners, but uh, it doesn't print anything for this because there's no new listening addresses. Um, so now it no longer finds like the shell from the permanent partition. So now uh, we can make a look for the temp serial busy box, um, and we're going to do this. By going into the go crazy go in our checkout, and um, we're gonna make this a little range here. We should probably factor this into like a separate go routine for cleanliness, um, but for now, this is gonna be temp zero busy box. Perm sh, and then instead of perm sh, we can check for shell. Okay. Uh, something is. So wrong, I think, because it's not formatting correctly. Oh yeah, it's saying 207, expect a semicolon found else. What the heck? Yeah, this should be it. Oh, and this doesn't work anymore because... Say, maybe try start shell. And then if our try start shell or not equals nil, just update the listeners. Um, okay, so we can do a last error error. Okay. Okay, doke. So, um, what we do now is sh.run. So, if that fails, last error should be set. Mm, but otherwise, should be clear. No, it will, it will actually be clean, but we can just return nil and then there's no question about it. Um, so this will just start the first shell it finds. Starting shell percent %s shell up on input on serial console. Okay, um, try start shell. And this can just say, yeah, I mean, I think it's fine if this just always falls back. Just gonna say, just gonna lock the error here. Okay. Uh, gonna restore the window configuration. Actually, update our code. Okay, it's updating. Gonna spy on the serial. I should take a sip of water. Completed. Oh yeah, sure. 
Um, okay, let's see. Serial busy box, applet not found. Yeah, um, so what this means is that um, serial busy box, uh, the, the busy box binary is what's actually called like a, a toolbox binary where um, you have many different programs that are compiled into one executable so that they can share a lot of code that they might naturally share. So for busybox, which is essentially like core utils, um, this makes a lot of sense because that way um, the shell binary is only two megabytes and is like you know, an entire core util suite. Not necessarily like the best implementations of everything, but implementations that will get you going. Um, so the problem here now is that um, in our Emacs, we can see that in try start shell, we are running exec.command shell, um, which means that we will start this and just, you know, busybox doesn't know that that's a shell. So an easy fix for this is we are just gonna say, we're gonna, well-known serial shell, const well-known serial shell, oops, too many quotes. Uh, we're gonna say, we're gonna create this directory Course, this should be file path up there. Okay. So, um, so this time the base name of the binary that we're executing will be sh, which uh, the busybox toolbox code will understand as us wanting to start the shell uh, applet within busybox, like the interactive shell applet. Um, busybox kind of dispatches based on uh, the file name that you access it from. Uh, and uh, the typical pattern that people use is that they create some links uh, with the names of the tools that they want Busybox to serve. Um, so now we have our shell. Uh, it says ls not found. Um, this is, why is this? Um, we somehow need to make it to, 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 I think we might need to recompile it for this actually. Uh, let me just quickly double check. Busybox.config. There's like a lot of differences between the configs, too many to actually compare them. Um, so let me close this, close this, close this. This can all go. Um, so the error message that we had, busy box, ls not found. Let's see what they say. Uh, this is not answered. No.
let's see, if we do a make menu config, search for applet. This is settings. Yes. Let's see. So this no longer installs the applet symlinks, but it doesn't say whether it still needs them and just wants like an outside environment to create them or not. Um, so we'll see. Um, do a go generate. Nice. And then update. Okay. Hmm. All right. No, it still says oh, it's not found. That is not good. Um, what happens? Yeah, this it doesn't want this, of course. Uh, oh God. Well, uh, ten serial busy box. Uh, export ls. I was not found. What the heck? Oh, does it actually not have ls? Uh, ln ps, sorry. shps ln not found. Yeah, I can't create some links like that. ls. lsof. ls is yes. So why does it not work though? LN, it, it says it's included. This is weird. Um, okay, so what happens if I do ash? Can't do ash. Um, I'm going to do ash here, like this. And then I'm going to say ash like this. I'm going to try it out um, with that links. Standalone mode. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. OK, that's fine. To enable all features, use make dev config, which produces the largest general purpose config. It's all yes config minus debugging. Make dev config make, and then write it as ash. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm trying here. No, it doesn't work. Shit. Okay. Um, I'm going to do dev config here. I'm going to do menu config. I'm going to do settings. And say build static binary. And also, I'm search for standalone. SH standalone. Oh, yeah, that is what I need. Location shells. 
ash. Stunnel um, and shell. Yeah, save. Okay, I feel like we're getting somewhere. Okay, CP it. Uh, wrap, generate, update, watch it. All right. Okay. Yeah, so now we have LS and PS and all of that good stuff. Um, and all you need to do really is uh, in your packer, you need to include that package. So we can update our docs um, to make it recommend all of that um, by default. So that the default command line for people who try it out the first time uh, will not only include uh, the hello world, but also like the serial busy box. And you know, if people don't want it, they can always leave it out. But um, if people do want it, this is a very nice way of debugging. Um, so that's all. That's going to be all for today. Um, I'm going to commit this and push it um, right after I take a quick break. Um, so thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you soon.